Today on Twitter, I saw that Justin Simmons that he was released from the Denver Broncos, and boy, I, I got to thinking. And y'all know me, y'all, y'all know me. I don't care if it's unrealistic or not. If I get to thinking about a player, when, especially when it comes to him being a possibility on the Baltimore Ravens, it gets me excited. And I, I go back to that Ravens Broncos game from a couple of years ago. Um, and just watching Justin Simmons, because I had never really watched him like that before, but just watching him in that game, I'm like, man, this dude is all over the field. Wherever the ball is, that's where he is too. And I just envisioned him being on the Baltimore Ravens. So then when he got cut this morning, I had tweeted, I said, come on home. Come on home, Justin Simmons. Come on to Baltimore. Just Let's just make it happen. I know that it's most likely not going to happen, but Anything's a possibility today ain't a possibility no more. And he ain't get signed nowhere yet, so we'll see. But it, it, it's most likely not, not going to happen. But anyway, there were some people saying, hey, what are you talking about? We got Marcus Williams. We got Kyle Hamilton. We don't need a Justin Simmons. Why would we get a Justin Simmons? What would be the point in signing Justin Simmons? And I told him, like, oh, hold up now. Even though it may not be very realistic to get Justin Simmons, the Baltimore Ravens, they do use one, two, three safeties, not just the traditional two. They use three. And if you recall, the reason that they use three is because they usually have two of them drop back. And this allows Kyle Hamilton to do whatever he wants, because that is the best version of Kyle Hamilton. Him being free, him literally doing everything, playing everywhere because he can do everything. He can play at any position on the field. And that allows him to be the best Kyle Hamilton. And that benefits the Baltimore Ravens in a major way. So all y'all that was coming at me for saying, oh, no, we don't need a third safety. Oh, no, yeah, I think we do. Now, uh, with Justin Simmons, uh, another thing that really got me excited about the possibility was when Adam Schefter said this. He said, since entering the league in 2016, no player in the NFL. So no player. They didn't say he ain't say no safety. He ain't say no corner. He ain't say no defender. Well, obviously, he'll be a defender. But he said no player in the NFL has had more interceptions than Justin Simmons with 30. So if that ain't get you excited about the possibility of adding the Justin Simmons to the Baltimore Ravens, even though it's unlikely, then I don't know what will. But anyway, um, there was more because that really got me wondering like, hmm, we may not get Justin Simmons, but this bodes well for the Baltimore Ravens to get or keep some other people and this could be really 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 good for the baltimore ravens and we're going to talk about exactly why but before we do make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video because i don't want y'all missing out i don't like when y'all miss out and leave a like on the video too because it helps out a lot now um justin simmons is available but so are a lot of other safeties right now the the, the safety market is oversaturated right now and that bodes well for the Ravens. And these are some of the names that are out there right now. Eddie Jackson, Rayshon Jenkins, Quandry Diggs, Kevin Byard, uh, Jamal Adams, Jordan Poyer, Justin Simmons. And shortly before I started recording this, uh, Steelers released Keanu Neal. And probably by the time you see this, another safety or two or three or four will probably get released and be available. And, and see, these are just the guys that are being added and have been added from being released from their teams to the free agent safety market. This don't even include pending free agents. So that plays a big role in this thing because the Ravens, the Baltimore Ravens, they have somebody of their own who is becoming a free agent. Uh, and that is Geno Stone. Now, I know a lot of people, they, they differ on how they feel about Geno Stone. Y'all know me, especially during the season when Marcus Williams went down. I just wanted there to be a way to where the Baltimore Ravens would and could keep Geno Stone, even though I knew it was going to be very hard because of Marcus Williams, his pay. And Marcus Williams is not a bad player at all. He just, unfortunately, since he got to the Ravens, he has dealt with big-time injuries. He had the, the broken forearm two years ago. Then last year, he had the torn pec. Uh, came back from both of them, but it just... It's been rough for him with the Baltimore Ravens health-wise. But when Geno Stone got his opportunity, he stepped in there and he showed out. I actually had somebody the other day. They, um, they were, I was talking to them. I forgot who it was. But they were trying to discredit Geno Stone's interceptions. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because they were like, oh, well, Geno Stone, he's overrated. He ain't all that. And nobody said he was ever all that. But 
they were like, oh, Geno Stone, some of his interceptions, they just came off of lame duck throws. And I'm like, well, hey, is, not, is an interception not an interception? Like, because don't interceptions get the ball back for your team? Don't, don't they keep, like, they, they take points completely away from the opposing team's offense. Because, like, if your team gets an interception, like, they, ain't no field goal. Obviously, ain't no touchdown for the opposing offense. No, they can't get any points because the ball is yours. So, in my opinion, I do not feel like Geno Stone or any interception is ever overrated. Because if it happened, it happened. And as Ravens fans, too, we have seen a lot of interceptions dropped in previous years. This year, not so much. But in previous years, we've seen a lot of interceptions dropped. And, ooh, it is a painful thing. So, to see somebody catch, what, seven of them? That's how much he had, right? I don't think that's overrated at all, in my opinion. But everybody got their own opinions, and that's just fine. But with Geno Stone, he is somebody that I really wanted the Baltimore Ravens to keep. Do I think that they'll retain him? Well, based off of this interview, probably not. Where do you ultimately want to be uh, when everything comes up here in the next couple of months? Uh, at the end of the day, you know, Baltimore's always home, but, you know, like I, like business is business, you know, that uh, being this league that's long, um, you know, I kind of, you know, you kind of said it right there. You know, I've been through it all, uh, especially my rookie year, but um, I just want to be somewhere I'm, I'm appreciated and, uh, you know, who, who wants me and for for me to be a starter, whoever, whoever it may be, um, I just want my value to be there. So Geno Stone let us know in more ways than one bye, pretty much. Like, <laughs> I ain't going back to Baltimore. I want somewhere where I can get both the opportunity to get paid because he want to break the bank. and I ain't mad at it at all. Get your money. And he wants an opportunity to start. He wants an opportunity to, to be out there on that field consistently. So I, I cannot and will not ever be mad at somebody trying to get that. And he deserves it. He deserves it. He had a very interesting path with the Baltimore Ravens. He got drafted, then got cut, then got brought back, and then he was a free agent, then they brought him back again. And, and when he got more of his opportunity, it certainly worked out for him. And I would just love to see him in a full-time role as a starting free safety somewhere. Where that could end up being? Well, I mean, the Seahawks, they just got rid of some safeties. Um, so I, I could see both him and Patrick Queen going to Seattle, really. Uh, with Mike McDonald but we'll see how things shake themselves out but th this helps the Baltimore Ravens a lot um, if t two ways one it increases their chance if they want to try to keep Geno Stone this does increase their chances a bit by that not too much because again I, I think he'll just want to go somewhere else to where he can really be the guy and I know with the Baltimore Ravens they use a lot of three safety sets like we talked about um, so he would be out there a lot, but still, I think he's going to want to go somewhere where he can be the free safety. That's Marcus Williams' role right now. That's not going to be Geno Stone's. And they could, of course, interchange him on different plays and whatnot, but I think Geno Stone, he ain't going to want to interchange with nobody. He's going to want that position all for himself, and I can't blame him. But another way that this market helps the Baltimore Ravens, uh, since there are so many safeties out there right now, there are a lot of free agent safeties that, again, guys that got cut and guys that will become free agents in a couple of days. This makes signing another safety a lot cheaper for the Baltimore Ravens and for everybody else. Like, say, for instance, it was just Justin Simmons and Jordan Poyer and Kevin Byard out there. And they were the top three safeties. Justin Simmons would obviously command uh, the most money. Um, and I think between Kevin Byard and Jordan Poy, it could be a toss up, probably Byard, but both of them could play. Um, and I wouldn't mind if the Ravens had either one of them, but uh, that would make the market a lot more higher. And Justin Simmons could get a lot more money uh, as opposed to if it's all these guys out there. The more guys out there on the market, the more saturated it is. Uh, the Unfortunately for them, a lot of times the lower the pay is going to be because teams have so many options. It's supply and demand. Uh, if the supply is low, then the demand is high. But if the supply is high, then the demand could be low. So whether it's Geno Stone or whether it's any of these other safeties, the Ravens, they have a lot of options. And something that uh, I have been thinking about, uh, especially going into this offseason, especially with Geno Stone getting ready to be a free agent, I wondered, like, man, would the Baltimore Ravens, especially in the position that they're in right now, uh, would they consider for that third safety? Because, again, you got Marcus Williams, you got Kyle Hamilton, so you said with those two, but you need one more. Would they consider maybe a rookie at that position? 
but I don't think so. I, I don't think they would. I, I think they're going to want a veteran uh, at that position, uh, at the safety position, because there's going to be a lot of responsibility with that. Not to say a rookie can't do it, not to say a rookie can't handle it, but with the Baltimore Ravens being in win now mode and needing to get over the hump now mode, I, I don't think they're going to put a rookie back there in that position. But really, only time will tell. Uh, only time will tell and the time will start telling in a couple of days when the new league year starts and we can see the Ravens start to pick and choose who they want to sign, who they want to retain, who they're going to let go officially and who's going to go on to other teams. First, again, they got to get under the cap. They got some work to do with that. Uh, but then after that, we're going to see what Baltimore does.